they backed their manager to the tune of 225, 230 million quid in this market. And Jurgen Klopp was left scraping around for signings on transfer deadline day, getting a loan player. This video is being sponsored by our friends at Spitch, the best fantasy football manager game on the App Store bar none. Why is it the best? You don't have to commit to an entire season. You can play individual game weeks if you want, choosing a brand new team every single weekend. Right now there's a new season mode where you can win up to £50,000 and there's even a free season mode with prizes of up to £2,500. Seasons mode is based on 34 game weeks and only your best five are counted at the end of the season. There are tons of stats and analytics available inside the app to help you choose your team and give you the best chance of winning if the money and the gameplay wasn't enough to tempt you how about Jurgen Klopp being an ambassador for speech this season if it's good enough for Mr Klopp it's good enough for me you must be 18 years or over to play use our link in the description below to download speech and win money with your football knowledge ultimately I want to talk about money for a second gentlemen because there is a lot of stuff doing the rounds and it's like it's like, it's like clockwork. Transfer window closes. And soon as the transfer window closes and we can't spend any money, out come the article saying how great we are generating money. So the Echo ran with a piece today, and they're not alone. Many other outlets have ran with a piece that says, Liverpool could be set for a record £602 million figure as Manchester United finally surpassed. This isn't coincidental, Chris, and it does my head in. It's like clockwork. We're underwhelmed in the transfer market, and then all of a sudden we're getting the articles to say how great FSG are with generating cash, how great the club's revenue streams are, how we've eclipsed Manchester United. Problem being, they backed their manager to the tune of 225, 230 million quid in this market, and Jurgen Klopp was left scraping around for signings on transfer deadline day getting a loan player yeah it's it's just mental pr and they've done they'll do wonders with people who don't realize what they're doing um right realistically i'm a fan of the fsg model um i think that it is it's a, it's difficult now with the mar with the market with sustain with um state-run clubs but I do really like the the way that they go about it, but it doesn't mean that I don't think we should go, we should go and spend more money, um, especially in areas that we need to, because in the end of the day, it will make their their own asset more valuable. Um, and I don't really quite understand how why they why they don't visualize that. But yeah, it's a positive PR wheel machine, mate. Um, and yeah, we'll just have to suck it up for the people who'll be like, oh yeah, we've made more money than Man United this year. Hmm. It's, it's not only that, Paddy. It's that we've seen. Today, people like Fabrizio Romano come out and speak about Liverpool doing big business on a midfielder and Jude Bellingham and stuff next summer. It's starting already. We're being told the same things we're told after every transfer window. Journalists and media are being briefed the same things they've been told. And we're supposed to just look each other in the eye and say, oh, OK, that's true then. Like, we don't have our own thought processes. Like, we haven't been... Pulled, had the wool pulled over our eyes multiple times by FSG and their media-friendly uh, outlets. Let's just say their friendly outlets. I'm fucking sick of it, mate. I am sick of it. Yeah, FSG aren't willing to bow down to inflation. Um, like they don't want to pay these kind of hyperinflated fees for. But at the end of the day, it's all subjective. If you if if players' fees have risen, like you know the the cost of buying players is going to rise, but you know the the price of the players you want to sell is going to rise as well. So it's all it'll all tie into each other. They need to eventually stump up the cash. Now they've always been good for a marquee signing. Um, you know, Allison, we needed him. We needed but we needed a centre back in Van Dyke. You know, we replaced Manny with Nunes. That was good. Uh, but it's that mid tier that I've always said that we struggle with, and we constantly leave ourselves short. And we had to go scrambling to Juventus for their their bottom tier players. Zakaria was arguably was apparently the first choice instead of Arthur. So. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't fill me with too much hope. I'm excited to see how Arthur gets on because I think technically he's a very good midfielder. But yeah, you know, we're, we have to kind of salvatate over a Juventus Loney when Man City can go out and buy a 50 million midfielder or not even not even play him. We can. That's the. I think that's the problem that the people have. Like, we can clearly with these figures being put out, we can go and do that. <clears throat> what? Why <clears throat> haven't we? Realistically, they don't have to go and spend hundreds of millions of pounds they just go and have to go and get the fill the problems which are there clearly here's like, 
here's something that might put some context to this. And again, full credit to the Athletic here, who this piece comes from, or this image comes from. Premier League spent £1.91 billion in this transfer window. This summer, £1.9 billion. The next highest of the top leagues was Serie A with £647 million. So one point. Well, I don't know, what is that? 1.25 million less or billion less. Ligue 1 in France, 482 million. La Liga, 437 million. And the Bundesliga, 418 million. So the Premier mm. League basically spent more than those other four leagues combined. And yet, once again, Chris, our net spend worked out at about £8 million. Pound. Yeah, again, that, that doesn't worry. It's, it's the fact that we haven't addressed the issues. That's the thing that worries me. Like how how it's like it's like having Stevie Wonder as an owner, right? You, you can't. You've got there's a clear issue in the midfield. There's a clear issue that Mohamed Salah needs challenging. Trent Alexander Arnold, yes, Calvin Ramsey's come in, but he's literally a fetus. Like at the end of the day, that's what worries me more. I'm not worried about how much they spend as long as they get the right people in. That's all that matters. But it has to be relative, Chris, because. I understand sort of, the yeah. point, and I understand not wanting anybody and wanting particular targets. I get that. But sometimes I feel like the owners forget that everybody else isn't standing still. And that just because we've been with Manchester City in prominence over the past few years doesn't mean that other clubs have, aren't going to act. And I'll give you an example. So Chelsea were the highest spenders. They spent £251 million in this transfer window with a net spend of just over £200 million. Manchester United spent 214 million with a net spend of 203 million. West Ham spent 163 million with a net spend of 147. Spurs 152 million net spend of 118. City were the outliers in this window. They generated more than they spent. They they have a, a surplus of plus 18.36 million from their business. They spent 125. Newcastle spent 122 million, didn't receive a shilling, not one penny from player sales. Arsenal, 118 million with a net spend of 97.4 million. That's where my problem is. Other teams are going out and spending money. And I do understand that just throwing money at problems doesn't solve it all the time. But neither is burying your head in the sand and being too idealistic in your views that only these one or two specific players can do a job. Exactly. Well, that that that's you're absolutely spot on. Like it's got to be a middle ground there. I don't think we need to go and spend three hundred million pounds um, because I think I think we've got already got the a very like the structure and a skeleton of a fantastic squad. But a hundred, like two more players, that's all. That's all that need that, for me. That's all that they that it needs. Um, so, and it's baffling that it hasn't got there. So, Paddy. Klopp's admitted we needed a midfielder. You don't go into the market at the end of the window without admitting you need a midfielder. He needed a midfielder when he was looking at Shu Many. So to go from, I think it was told that January time we were informed that Shu Many was going to choose Real Madrid. I think there was a piece somewhere that mentioned that fact. So we had between January and the end of the transfer window to find a fucking midfield player. And the best we could do, and I'm not knocking Arthur, I hope he works out. And the fact that we've an option to buy him, I'm happy with that. You know, if he proves himself, brilliant. But the best we could do was the, the night before at midnight, start ringing Juventus and seeing if we could have Zakari or if we could have uh, Arthur. And we couldn't even get to one of those two that we actually wanted. <laughs> now, yeah, of course. Now, just what, what you were saying there about so many other clubs doing more than us. Now, I would think it's important to say that other clubs are in need of more than us at times. Like we have, a, as, as Chris said, like a very good spine and a very good you know, squad in general. It's just a couple of additions we need. Uh, now, on the, the midfielders we brought in, I just think it's clearly a case of, uh, which Klopp alluded to in a press conference, it was like, I would take more risk at times. FSG just aren't willing to pay those. Like, we were apparently in for Caicedo, but they're bright and were demanding mad money. FSG weren't willing to spend that money, and we're being held back by these owners. Now, they've brought us so far, but if they're, if they're going to continue to not bow down to the current transfer value of players... Then we're gonna stagnate and we're gonna re- we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna regress, um. But yeah, yeah, to leave it that late and end up with a Juventus Loney who has missed almost fifty games in four seasons, uh, to rectify an already uh, depleted midfield, is 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 abhorrently mismanagement. And Chris, the one of the aspects of this that annoys me the most is I'm a big advocate for. <clears throat> 
allowing for mistakes, but learning from mistakes. And FSG did not learn from the centre-back situation where they've handled it almost the same way in that they've brought in somebody who isn't ideal on loan. And there's already probably an acknowledgement that we aren't going to make that deal permanent. At least that's what was... It was Juventus' side that insisted on this option to buy that was into the contract, apparently. So, again, it just feels like I'm willing to give them credit for the good stuff, but they aren't learning lessons. And if their goal is to continue the club's growth financially, as you've said yourself, protecting your asset is part of that service.